Welcome back to The Breakfast, time for the press. We have Tunde Kolawale and James Ebor, legal practitioners, joining the conversation this morning via phone. It's good to have you join us, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you. All right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Quickly, uh, the bold caption for the leadership talks about uh, cancer patients. It says, cancer patients stranded for months at National Hospital over faulty machine. Underneath management claims ignorance of failure of $3 million CTM machine since January. Equipment service or serves Abuja and Northern region. CSOs raise concern, wants health spending probed. These are uh, the riders underneath the board caption. Away from that, we cater PDP National Working Committee. I helped you emerge. Now pay me back. <laughs> Zoning consensus. Order stop agenda as APC NEC meets today. We won't allow any one group destabilize Nigeria. That's what the president is quoted to say. And just before we move away from the leadership, IMF reviews Nigeria's growth forecast from 2.7% to 3.4%. 20 burnt alive in Bauchi auto crash, and two die as the NAF aircraft crashes in Kaduna. Bandits kill three. These are the headlines on the leadership. Then to the Nation newspaper, the main caption for this morning, battle for PDP ticket hearts up as nomination closes today. Atambo submits form says, I will unite Nigerians. Governor Wikif. Uh, field me or uh, we lose uh, or be meets delegate who will be fair to all are you assures people's gang sex in dubai police invite parties apc primaries uh Ngige namani joint presidential race or show appointees to go seven or uh, to go seven resign in cano next year okay guidelines lecture dies one week after release by kidnappers Two pilots killed in Air Force trainer jet crash. Tinubu raises smear campaign alert. Buhari will won't allow anybody to destabilize Nigeria. Uh, those are the main stories we can find on the Nation newspaper. All right, uh, away from the Nation, the uh, let's take a quick look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Electoral Act Presidency OSGF disagree over Buhari's minister's refusal to resign. You also have, like Amechi Ngige declares for presidency, refused to leave office. Gandu J. Oyetola, okay res resignation of appointees contesting for 2023 polls. Marifa faction wants APC against re representing Zamfara 20 or repeating Zamfara 2019 mistakes. Drop your presidential beat, a Fanny Ferry uh, leader telling the former president, I mean, a former. Uh, Governor of Lagos State, Bola Tunubu, and also the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibajo. Another NAF jet crashes in Kaduna, two feet killed. I won't allow anyone to destabilize Nigeria, Buhari tells governors and service chiefs. And we just quickly look at this. Despite CBN clampdown, Nigeria traded 316 billion Naira Bitcoin in 2021. And Chris Lenz sexual acts. School parents, pupils meet police today. Four children, 16 passengers die as speeding Bauchi vehicles explode. Now we'll just take one or two before we move away from the punch. Ten bankers lend customers 2.9 trillion naira in 12 months. This is according to report. An oil price, IMF upgrades Nigeria's economic growth forecast to 3.4%. The big question everyone would always ask is how does this translate into the standard of living of Nigerians? Uh, San Uzodima Feniferi faults the affair Babalola on interim government. That would constitute a uh, crux of our conversation this morning as we proceed. You also have Buhari spokesman inefficient and uh, what else do you have here? Poor writer says Matthew Coca. These are the headlines on the punch. And finally, we go to the Daily Independent newspaper. 
The main story, nobody will be given room to destabilize Nigeria. That's according to the president, Muhammad Buhari. IGP most secures coast, deploys uh, operational assets. Pilots fear death as another NAF plane crashes in Kaduna. Oshibajo's team alerts on a hateful campaign plan against VP. PDP may lose 2023 presidency if I don't pick its ticket. A week wants NWC. Gun men abduct five wedding guests in Anambra. Opposition behind attacks in Imo, Kaduna, Ebony. Uzodimma insists 2023 election. Why Songwo Lu uh, got not to go for second term? Throwing presidential ticket open will be a mistake for PDP that's according to a chief tender, but they judge. IMF raises Nigeria's growth forecast to 3.4% in 2022. And Gege formally joins presidential race. Those are all of the stories you can find on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, let's uh, have the gentleman join the conversation, Tunde Kolawale. Uh, legal practitioner and James Seaborg, a legal practitioner. Once again, thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the show. Thanks for having us. Okay, so um, let, let's start off with uh, some of the headlines that we have. I mean, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. I'd like to start with the punch, I beg your pardon. Uh, I start with James Ebor. Electoral Act Presidency, OSGF, disagree over Buhari's minister's refusal to resign. And uh, this might just be uh, a little bit of an issue here. Uh, underneath, you have Gandhi J. Oyetola orders OK uh, resignation of appointees contesting for 2023 polls. Now, some people are saying those who have been elected, I mean, it's a different thing, those who were elected into office should not resign. And others are saying um, it should just be the consent of those who are appointees of government. But what, what, do, you think that, um, what do you think that should be? Well, yes. As, as for me, uh, no matter how bad the law is, no matter how unpalatable a law is, law is law on it is repealed. All political appointees have to come, I mean, um, abide by that section 84, 82 of the Electoral Act on it is repealed. Uh, when you look at it critically, it may not be too good that a section of the political class to insist or to find a way or to make a law to, circ to circumscribe, to put impediment, uh, a barrier in front of uh, co-political uh, participants in participating effectively in electoral activities. But the law has been made and has been made that will be okay. L let's also share the thoughts of James Ebor on this particular one, Tunde Kola Wale. Please, there is this very important point I want to make, and I will do it very briefly. My position is that the people in the National Assembly may have made that law believing or based on the experience that political appointees usually use public resources, government resources, to power to finance their participation in politics when they continue to remain in office without resigning and those political activities take place? Yes, I, I beg to disagree. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear ahead. you. Yes, the, um, the Electoral Act, beautiful document. In fact, I like the way the Section 84 was couched. But is that the law today? Remember the judiciary has the power of judicial review. And as far as that section is concerned, it's been, it's been um, reviewed by the High Court. And the matter is currently on appeal. So it will be, I think it will not be proper to say that the law is that they should resign. The law had changed by virtue of the judgment in Abia State High Court. What matters then is what would the Court of Appeal say? And whatever court of appeal says now becomes the law. As it stands now, we have a law that says they have to resign, and the judiciary has now said, look, that should not be the law. It's been reviewed. So the question is, what is the law today? I think if uh, my appreciation of the law is correct, 
is that the law is in status quo. It means that section has been removed by law. It has been removed because the court has said so. The court actually made an order striking it out. So that is no longer the law. And until the Court of Appeal decides otherwise, there will be no need for any political appoint appointee resigning as a matter of law because it's no longer the law because there is a pronouncement of a high court. And until that pronouncement is set aside, the position is that they shouldn't resign because it has been struck out. All right, let's stay on the Poncha newspaper. Uh, there's a whole lot going on concerning um, the uh, presidential, uh, you know, interest of uh, the VP and, of course, the former governor of Lagos State. They are still in the news. Uh, but the Poncha captures it this way. Drop the presidential bids. A Fenifera leader tells uh, Tinubu Oshiba Joe. This is coming in the wake of uh, alleged, uh, you know, you know, campaign smear that we uh, have been told, you know, is going on right now. So let me get to you now, Barista Tunde Kolawali. What's your opinion concerning the position of the Afenifere leader asking, you know, the the VP and uh, the Lagos, the former Lagos State Governor, to drop their presidential, you know, bids? Well, the Afenifere people are entitled to their opinion. Like any other Nigerian, I share their concern. They want stability in this country. They want inclusiveness. They want all sections of the country to feel that they really belong to this country. And they are never shut out of any opportunity that is available to other tribes, gender, or war as well. But again, you must remember my own position, which is that I don't care where the presidency come from. It is our best and the best people, the best brain, those who can take us out of this quagmire that we are finding ourselves as, um, as a nation, shall so we be allowed to manage our affairs. I am looking at people like Montagu, I am looking at people like Shore, I am looking about, uh, I mean, like, uh, I tell you, I mean, is it a king woman of APP? I am looking at somebody like the man in jail, Isaac Oloyede. These are people who have demonstrated integrity and transparency. Furthermore, when tribes begin to say it is their turn to rule, you are kind of insulting, you are abusing and denigrating the other tribes. There are 350 tribes in Nigeria, and all of them are entitled to govern Nigeria, entitled to rule Nigeria. But the Igbos, the Yorubas, the Aosa, and the Fulani have appropriated Nigeria to themselves, as if Nigeria belongs to them. So when they talk about Nigeria, when they talk about leadership, they're only thinking about the outside, the full and the Yoruba people ruling, which I think it is wrong. It is a thing that um, we, we kind of uh, rubbing salt in the injuries of, uh, of the other side. There is no tribe that is bigger than the other, no matter the size of this uh, uh, tribe. So I am for the best hand, for the best brain, and for, for, the, for, for, for the best uh, program. No matter who the person is coming from, whether it's coming from the East, whether it's a full animal who has the best program and the best agenda to rule Nigeria, I don't care where it comes from. And there are very, very people. When you look at it, they are in a sanctuary, a world control. They have over the voters. They only make noise on the pages of newspaper. All right, um, let's move away from that now. Uh, James Seaboard, this might be. Uh very interesting. Some people say it's an irony. The president saying he would not allow anyone on any group to destabilize the country. As a matter of fact, the perception here is that some people have allowed themselves to be used to destroy their country. What do you make of this statement in the wake of security challenges that we're faced with as a country? Well, it is um, that statement from the president himself is very hypocritical and uh, unfortunate and very disappointing. In fact, I think the president has taken Nigerians for granted. He's talking about he will not allow. He has allowed people to destabilize this country. The insecurity in this country, the lopsided appointment, the the response to security issues really shows that the man has lost control. The president should, in fact, resign his position. He has failed. The only reason why we have government is to protect lives and property. And he wakes up every day to tell you uh, he will not allow. Then, of course, he has actually fueled 
uh, insecurity and destabilization of this country himself by his his actions. You know, people are dying in Kaduna and he's jetting out of the country. You talked about one of the newspaper um, uh, headlines you read. Uh, I think it's from the national leadership newspaper about the cancer, the national hospital, and the cancer machines being that he doesn't care. He doesn't really care <clears throat> because the political elites will always jet out for uh, <clears throat> to, for uh, medical tourism. They don't really care. I think uh, Nigeria is like a farm. They just come farm and take it out. This country is actually disintegrating, and he wakes up every morning to to threaten people. Uh, I think that statement is targeted, it's political and targeted to which form a particular group. You, you know the people who are ready to stabilize it, you know the issues, you know those actually causing insecurity in this country. Why not go after these criminals? You understand? Uh, people actually stealing money. He just gave um, a, 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 a pardon to some um, criminals, convicted criminals. And he's telling all what is he, what is the president actually saying? I, I hate to hear this each time he, he responds to to uh, concerns about insecurity. He, he makes me he actually demonstrates his incompetence, his frustration. Because he has the resources, he has the support. He came and we thought as a as a former general, he will solve the, 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 the problem of insecurity and corruption, but he has turned out to be the worst president that I ever had. Okay, but uh, James Ball, let's also can you hear us? I can't hear, I'm here. Okay, so let's quickly just, you know, have a connect with the thoughts that you raise on the leadership newspaper. It talks about cancer patients stranded for months at the National Hospital over faulty machines. And you are saying that uh, the president has actually failed. He doesn't really care. And so argument over time has been that you have the civil society organization raising concern and wanting a probe about the spending of the health budget. Yes, we know that the budget has not really met, you know, the required um, uh, spending that has been allocated, especially uh, the UN and what have you. But w would you really blame the president? Should we be blaming the president or we should blame how far we have not been able to spend what's even made available? We have a minister for health. We have auditor generals. We have an auditor general who audits the account of federal establishments who track expenditure of government uh, departments and agencies. Has the government implemented the recommendations of this audit report? The answer is no. Our president is not challenged, is careless about what actually happens here. You are talking about, yes, you spent money to revive the health sector and that you have not seen the money. So what happened? Is it James Tibor, a civil society organization, that should prosecute those who have diverted or misappropriated health budget? Is it not the government he's heading? He's actually shown gross incompetency. Yeah? He, should, he should not... Remember there was issues about the budget of the, the Astor Rock um, um, uh, Clinic. And, and, and he has not said anything about it, even when the wife raised an alarm. But because they have taxpayers' money to always travel abroad for medical tourism, they don't really care about average Nigerian civil servants who cannot even treat themselves in, 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 in hospitals in Nigeria. You heard the scandal about a year ago of, uh, of um, uh, medical doctors you know, queuing up in long queues to travel to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the best brains are leaving this country. And you think uh, um, uh, we, 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 Nigeria will be developed? All right. Is, is it possible when the generals themselves are leaving? I want to leave the soldiers to that direction. Our doctors are leaving. The best of our doctors are leaving the country because of the poor state of our health infrastructure, where we can't even maintain, in, in, in the national hospital, we can't maintain cancer machines. This is woeful. This is very disgraceful. All right, uh, let's uh, move on. Let's uh, bring uh, Tunde Kolawali uh, back into the conversation. Let's uh, take uh, uh, one or two stories from the Daily Independence as we round off. Uh, there are lots of stories uh, 
uh, you know, PDP is in the news. Uh, uh, PDP may lose 2023 presidency if I don't pick its ticket. Uh, Wiki is one in the NWC. And uh, throwing presidential ticket open will be a mistake for PDP, but they judge. Uh, Kolawale, let's just talk about both of them you know, side by side as we round off this uh, conversation. Well, the feelers that the PDP is sending out to the Nigerian people and to the rank and file of their members is that the party is also in disarray. It's not as coercive as, um, I mean, uh, it's not coercive just like uh, the APC. And when you have the two point like political parties with this kind of uh, disorganization, with this level of disarray, with this level of non preparedness for the 2023 election, the Nigerian people should have the cause to worry. The truth of the matter is that uh, if it is a consensus of the end of the issue of the PDP and also the decision of the rank and file membership to go by consensus or to go by delegated voting or whatever, every party member, no matter how they play, should queue into the majority decision. But no and behold, this is not what we don't see in this uh, political uh, dispensation that we are in today. Everybody thinks it's a law done to himself because he's governor, because he's minister, because he's vice president, because he's president. And you don't run a political party like this. And then for you, Wike, he has been too garrulous and too cantakerous in all his disposition, not chances and uh, activities. And when you look at what is on ground in his state, with the quantum of money that goes to that state uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the monthly basis, as monthly allocation from the Federation account. You couldn't say that the uh, wiki has performed exceptionally well. What he's been doing is just bullying and brow bullying and brow brushing citizens, voters, members of his own political parties. I think he's a lot of the man up. So my take is the end of this year of uh, the PDP to put his foot down and whip wiki into line if he doesn't want to abide by majority decision. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Barista uh, Kolawali. Uh, th those are some of the stories on the Daily Independent. But let's see if we can take one more uh, from James Ibo right now. Uh, the governor of uh, Imo State uh, is quoted as saying that um, the opposition is behind all the attacks in Imo, Kaduna, Ebony State. Do you agree with his postulation? Well, it is sad. It's coming from a governor who is uh, the head of uh, the executive arm of government in Imo State. And uh, the same member uh, belongs to the same political party with the president, who is the commander in chief, and he um, has the secretary general at his beck and call. Uh, like I said, again, he has made a political statement geared towards trying to suppress opposition. Usually, everything uh, negative that happens is blamed on opposition, when, of course, they have all the resources to expose the, the evil the criminal activities, the so-called criminal activities of the opposition party. That statement is political and mis, uh, misdirected and very unfortunate. They, had, they, they, are, they are the government in power, and they have all the intelligence, all the resources, taxpayers' money to bring to justice all those causing insecurity. It just shows you how, how deep um, political leadership has um, uh, degenerated in Nigeria, where the, the, the poor people, the victims themselves and survivors of uh, criminal uh, attacks are blamed for their woes. I want to use the opportunity to comment on the Christland. You mentioned it in one of the papers, the Christland um, uh, Sejua Cape Saga. And um, uh, use this opportunity to correct the impression that uh, when people say uh, it's rape, it's actually not rape. Uh, those are sexual offenders, and we have um, a juvenile um, justice system that should be implemented. Lagos State has the child rights law. A child rights law. They also have education guidelines for child offenders. They have a well-trained police force um, that um, should handle um, juvenile cases in Lagos State. Lagos State has been very proactive. I want to use the opportunity that they should use the unit in the Nigerian police force that has been trained over the years on how to handle children cases, to get into these cases. They have family courts also 
you know. So they should, uh, you know, begin to make good use of these resources. And I, I'm sure um, using the Minister of Youth and Social Welfare Services to also regulate schools. Because these, are, these cases, they have always been there. It, it, it's not new. It's just that social media has made it uh, more prominent because it's easy to get to circulate information now. We just have to be deliberate about protecting children. Like John Locke would say, children are born in clean slate. It is the society has, that has made them. So society has to take responsibility to protecting these kids by ensuring that they are not exposed to certain content that will ruin their future. Well, James... James Sibo, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. The newspaper review, to be precise. Thank you, uh, Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner thank as well, for being part of the show. We appreciate your time, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from um, the newspaper review that's off the press, uh, let's go back this day in history. Today in history is up next on the show. Stay with us. <laughs>